my lovely students. Do you ever get confused between can, could, should, will, shall, might, must? Well, today you're going to learn how to use modal verbs and at the end, I'm going to quiz you. Welcome back to J4S English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, let's talk about modal verbs of ability. Can. You know this one already. She can speak four languages fluently. Or, I can see the stars tonight. Notice for the structure, we have our subject, then we have the modal verb, and what comes next? The base verb, I can see. The base verb, I can see the stars tonight. You can't say, Ah, can't. You can't say, I can to see the stars tonight. Using the infinitive is grammatically incorrect. So remember that structure, subject, modal, base verb. Don't worry about taking notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can find the link in the description. You can use could for past ability. When I was younger, I could run fast. Now, because you use could, which is past ability, this means that today I can't run fast or I can't run as fast as I could in the past. Notice I use the negative and a contraction. Today I can't run as fast. So the structure here is subject, modal, not, often formed as a contraction, so pay attention to those contractions, and then the base verb, I can't run as fast today. Also remember that modals are not conjugated. They're not conjugated with the subject or the time reference, so grammatically they're very easy. So don't say she can runs, you don't conjugate run with the subject she. You don't conjugate it at all. Of course, without the modal in the present simple, she runs very fast. You would conjugate it, but with the modal, she can run very fast. Let's combine these two together. When I was younger, I couldn't speak English, but now I can. I'm sure that describes you, so put yes I can, yes I can, yes I can, put that in the comments. Keep in mind that could is also the polite form of can. Could you open the window please? Notice the sentence structure for questions. We have the modal, could, then the subject, could you, and then the base verb. Could you open the window please? You can of course use can, can you please open the window? Could sounds more formal, more polite. Notice the placement of please, it can come at the end of the sentence or after the subject. Now let's talk about permission, both asking for permission and giving permission. You can use can, can I leave early today? And then to answer you can say yes you can or no, you can't. I can give you permission and say you can borrow my book. In this case, may is the polite form of can. May I use your phone sounds more formal and polite than can I use your phone. Or to give permission, you may enter now. What about this question? May you open the window please? What do you think about this question? This isn't natural. A native speaker would use could. Could you open the window, please? This is because may is not used with the subject you to ask for permission. With the subject you to ask for permission, use could instead. The other subjects you can use may. May I open the window? May she open the window? May we, may they open the window? But only for you, could you open the window? Don't forget that. Let's talk about possibility, but not certainty. Might, it might rain today. Could, it could rain today. Keep in mind, there is no agreement to what percentage of certainty that might and could represent. 
So it might rain. What is that? Is that 40% chance of rain, 60%, 80%? There is no general agreement. It depends on how the speaker interprets it. So you would just have to ask the person, well, how likely is it? Should I bring an umbrella? And the same goes for could. I'm sure you've noticed by now that one modal can have different meanings. So don't get confused by this. I could run, I could run fast when I was young. This is used for ability. Could you open the window, please? This is the polite form of can. It could rain later. This is for possibility. So you have to look to the context to understand how the modal is being used. Let's talk about obligation, must. This sounds forceful or legally required. You must wear a seatbelt. This is either a very forceful, strong recommendation from someone like your mother, or it is legally required. You must renew your passport. This is something a flight attendant might tell you and they do not allow you to fly because your passport is expired. And this is an obligation. Native speakers commonly use have to when we want to sound less forceful. I have to finish this by tomorrow. We have to start eating healthy. Notice the structure here. We have have to plus base verb. If you prefer, you can think of it as have plus infinitive, which is to plus base verb. Either way, don't forget the to. For lack of obligation, take have to and turn it into the negative. Don't have to. You don't have to complete this form. You do not have to, and then as a contraction, you don't have to complete this form. Or your boss could say to you, you don't have to finish the report. There's a lack of obligation. For the structure here, notice do not, don't, have to, and then base verb. Let's talk about prohibition, things that are prohibited, not allowed, often legally. You can use cannot, and as the contraction, most commonly used, can't. You can't smoke inside, that's prohibited. You must go outside, that's the obligation. You can't smoke inside, you must go outside. You can't use your phone during the exam, that's the prohibition. You must turn off your phone during the exam, that's the obligation. Cannot, as one word, is the correct spelling. The incorrect spelling is can not as two words. So cannot, one word, or the contraction can't. Let's talk about must not because this is a strong recommendation, but it is not a legal requirement. You mustn't sign the contract. This sounds more like my recommendation because I think it's a bad idea. You mustn't sign the contract. You must not sign the contract, but that isn't an obligation. If it were, I would say you can't sign the contract. You're prohibited from signing the contract. Let's talk about advice. You can use should to give and ask for advice or suggestions. You should study five days per week. You should eat more vegetables. You shouldn't quit your English class. You should not, you shouldn't. Ought to is used to give advice or suggestions. You ought to eat more vegetables, but ought to is not used in modern English. I remember my grandma using ought to, but I never do. If you do use it, just remember it's ought to plus base verb. You need that too. To ask for advice or suggestions, use should. Should we partner with this company? Should I stop following J Forest English? What do you think? Well, to reply, you can say, yes, you should, or 
No, you definitely shouldn't. Hopefully you choose that option. Let's talk about shall. So you're at a restaurant, you just finished your meal, you paid for the check, and you can say to the table, shall we go? Shall we go? And then someone at the table could reply back and say, we shall. That is the only modern usage of shall, but it is very commonly used to suggest leaving a place. Shall we go? Shall we go? So if you want to use shall, I only recommend you use it in that specific context. Let's talk about will and would because they are modal auxiliary verbs, so they have many different meanings and uses. Will can be used for spontaneous future decisions. I will help you move. And I just decided in the moment. It wasn't something I planned. I'll help you move. It can be used for predictions, often with I think. I think it will rain tomorrow. It might rain. It could rain tomorrow. We also use will for promises and commitments. I'll subscribe and I'll like this video. If you say that and you use will, you just made a commitment. So make sure you subscribe and like this video so you don't break your promise. Let's talk about would. It's used in hypothetical situations. I would go on vacation if I had more time. So just by saying I would go on vacation, I know it's a hypothetical. We use would for polite requests or offers. Would you like me to make more lessons just like this? You can say, yes, I would, or no, I wouldn't. We also use would for past habitual actions. Remember, could was for past ability, but would is for a habitual action, something you repeatedly did in the past. When I was young, I would spend hours playing in the park. I loved it because I could run really fast. So could is the past ability, but would is the habitual past action. Here's how native speakers have fun with the meaning of modal verbs. Let's say you ask me for something and you say, Jennifer, could you help me? A native could reply back and say, I could, and maybe I should, but I won't. So the questioner is using could as the polite form of can. Could you help me? But I reply, a native speaker replies as a joke, I could, because we're using it for possibility. I could help you. And maybe I should help you because it's an advice or recommendation, but I won't, which is a refusal. So now you know everything you need to know about modals. Let's quiz your knowledge. Here are the questions. Hit pause and take as much time as you need. And when you're ready, hit play to see the answers. Here are the answers. Hit pause, review the answers, and when you're ready, hit play. So how'd you do with that quiz? Share your score in the comments below. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And I have a complete grammar masterclass where we dive deep into confusing grammar concepts. So make sure you watch it right now.